Good morning. Thank you for joining us to, as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, to those of you and to those who are joining online. As we enter this last week of Advent, our weather is darker, colder, and wetter. Yes, but yet we light our fourth Advent wreath candle, symbolizing peace, to proclaim our faith that Jesus, our Messiah, is with us in the darkness. His light overcomes the darkness that surrounds us. And just as we have celebrated the hope, love, and joy we have in Jesus in our first three weeks of Advent, so today we assert that in Jesus the Lord, we have a peace that overpowers our anxieties, our fears, and our doubts. Today's gospel reminds us that just as the Virgin Mary brought Jesus to her cousin Elizabeth, so she continually brings our Savior to us through her intercession and loving presence. There will be a collection today for the retired religious sisters, brothers, and priests who have generously served the Church for many years without an adequate retirement plan. Envelopes are in the pews. Please put your donation in with the regular collection. Now, please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Donald, and the preacher is Father Michael.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and the peace of Christ our Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. As the light of this Advent wreath has grown brighter through these weeks of Advent, so may the light of Christ within us continue to grow stronger, nurtured by the prayers and intercessions of Our Lady of Guadalupe. We now invite the family to come forward this time to light the candle, the Martinez family. We light the fourth candle on our Advent wreath, the candle of peace. May this candle symbolize our desire to pe for peace in the world that has been distressed by division and conflict. Isaiah prophesied a day when the lion would lie down with the lamb. O oh God, hear us to become Christ's light. Help us to become Christ's light in the darkness and the instrument of his peace in our homes and in our world. May your spirit quell the senseless prejudice, bickering and violence that occurs in our world. And may our prayer rise to you like incense through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, You, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be the ruler of Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall remain for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord.
guide me in the way of your truth. For you are God, you are God, you are God, my From the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As it is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desire nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. You need no reminding, I'm pretty sure, that Christmas is just one week away. These last days of Advent should be a time of increasing peace and joy, but you might feel instead like a student cramming for an exam. All you can think is, I'm not ready. There are still so many gifts to be chosen and wrapped, yet in the midst of all this holiday anxiety, some of you may still have thoughtfully wondered what gift you could give God. Does that seem an odd question? Uh, It really shouldn't. We offer gifts to God all the time. The prayers we say, the sacrifices we make, those are gifts. And of course, whenever we come to Mass, we offer God the gift that He first gave us, His own divine Son. But what gift would God want from you now? Well, from today's readings, we know at least that It's something that can come from our own humble background. In the history of Israel, David, of course, was just a simple shepherd boy, but he became king. And he came from this small, out-of-the-way town called Bethlehem, more fully called Bethlehem Ephrathah, a word that means fertile or perhaps fruitful. And indeed, out of its insignificance, Bethlehem also produced Jesus himself. So our gift to God can and really should reflect our own personal history and existence, After thinking, what could that be? What should I choose? What can I give to God? We might end up just saying, Lord, there's really nothing I can give you but my very self. And that's exactly the right gift. But we have to make sure that in giving ourselves, we give every part of ourselves. So we might start by giving God our hearts and the love that goes with them. And this, of course, is good. It's very good. But for our gift to be more complete, it should also include our bodies. That's the gift that Jesus gave to his Father, He, of course, offered his loving and obedient heart. Father, not my will be done, but yours. But he expressed that gift in and through his body. 
The Gospels record that for us very dramatically, and in today's readings, the second one, from the letter to the Hebrews, we hear Jesus saying, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. And following those words, Jesus made his body a worthy gift. In offering himself to the Father, he let his body carry the obedient love in his soul. And then in today's gospel, we have the example of the Virgin Mary giving herself in a complete offering to God. She, too, was obedient to that inviting will of God and offered a place in her body in which Christ could assume his human nature. In that way, like Bethlehem Ephrathah that produced a king of Israel, so did Mary, ever a virgin, bring forth the king of heaven and earth. Now, in the history of Christianity, we find repeatedly through the centuries that people would go astray because they denied the goodness of their bodies. They thought wrongly that the human person was really just the soul and the body this sort of almost burdensome and surely insignificant container for the soul. But that sort of thinking doesn't faithfully represent our Christian belief. We hold more correctly that our bodies are an integral part of our human nature. And so, if we want to give the gift of our whole selves to God, we have to include our obedient bodies. How would you do that? We have the example of Jesus. We have the example of Mary. We can think, too, of the apostles, surely the martyrs, and the great missionaries through the centuries that put their bodies into their gift to God. How would you do that? Well, at Christmas, we remember and affirm and celebrate the belief that God took on a human nature, and with that, he took on a human body. With the incarnation, there arises in us the knowledge that our bodies are noble. And so on earth, we can offer them together with our souls in the full gift of ourselves to God. And then in heaven, we'll get them back, raised and glorified, taken up into our eternal life with God, who, we remember, humbled himself to become a man, soul and body. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is glorified, spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, we come before you this day filled with confident hope knowing that our Blessed Mother Mary intercedes for us and walks with us. That we, like Mary, may open our hearts to the peace of Jesus, which surpasses all understanding and which can overcome our darkness, anxieties, fears, and doubts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, like Mary, may allow God to work in us and through us to bring his hope, love, joy, and peace to our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling with the rain and cold, with the pandemic, with the typhoon in the Philippines, and with other difficulties, and for those who are trying to help them, we pray to the Lord. that this Christmas season may be for us and for those around us a season of healing, especially for those who have lost loved ones, those who are estranged from family or friends, and for those who are far from home. We pray to the Lord. For Solfred and Abner Bunsalan, for the eternal repose of their souls, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. For all the intentions in our Book of Intentions and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Holy God, As we approach the marvel of Christmas, the birth of your Son, may your Holy Spirit come upon us and overshadow us as it did the Virgin Mary. And with her, may we believe that nothing is impossible for you to accomplish in us and in our world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord.
<clears throat> Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice in the mystery of his nativity, so that he may give us watchful, may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. gives you praise for your through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread from the table, and in giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Celebrate the 
memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Dominic, our Father, our Holy Sister, Catherine of Siena, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, and all your apostles and martyrs and saints and all of on those on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, with Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, especially this repose of the souls of Solfred and Abner, and all whom you have called to your side, who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from all of our fears and our anxieties as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. of God.
Let's pray together our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, My Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as, as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for some messages. Our Children's Faith Formation Program would like to thank all parishioners for the generous donations to the Christmas gift giving drive for at-risk youth and their families that we had in the last couple of weeks. Our holiday, holiday toy box overflowed with gifts for this noble cause, so thank you very much for that. The New Year's Eve 6 p.m. Mass is canceled, so there will be only one Mass that day at 8 a.m. New Year's Eve, 6 p.m. Mass is canceled. Okay. You will find our Christmas Mass schedule in today's bulletin, and that will go extend up to January 1st. So you have the accurate time, so you don't have to call us at the rectory asking what time the, the, the visible Mass is on January 1st. Okay. If you would like to donate $10 in memory of a loved one for our Christmas flowers this year, please put your money in an envelope with the name of the loved one on it and drop it in the collection or at the parish office mailbox. We ask $10 for each name. Father Isaiah will continue his Advent teaching series on the O Antiphons that you can find in our parish Facebook page and on YouTube. Volunteers are needed to help decorate the church this week. Volunteers are needed to help decorate the church this week. Volunteers are needed to help. <laughs> you get my drift? For our upcoming Christmas Masses, as well as to clean up after the New Year's Eve dinner dance, please vi visit our website and look for the Sign Up Genius link or stop by the office where there will be a sign-in sheet. This is a great opportunity to earn service hours for our school parents and for all par parishioners to give your time and talents to this community this Christmas. Thank you. Free Catholic calendars for 2022 are available in the church office in English and in Spanish. Okay, hay un calendario en la oficina de la parroquia, en español o en inglés, como quieres. Got that? Okay, I'll next follow with all of the Tagalog I know. Dina go on. Oh, there's other parts, yeah, okay. <laughs> Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us all and remain with us forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.